We're recording right now? Like, whoa, this is all secret. All my secret projects are out and everything. I, including my piston rings and door handles and head bolt set for a Toyota car I'm rebuilding. I mean, wow, what a convenient time to tell you. Don't forget to subscribe. I got a whole bunch of awesome things coming up soon. Trying really hard to hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. But let's get into this giant right here. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching D2 Wrenchworks and DIY guys. Please do take a moment to subscribe. I'm on that road to hit 1000 so I can start making better videos, invest more into the channel, and find more cool products like this bike right here. I imagine like Bike Blue Book values this at a whopping $100 and change, which is hilarious to me because the Ultegra shifters that are on this bike, I mean, you're probably going to be spending $120 on eBay just for the shifters, not even kidding you. This is a 9-speed drivetrain on this bike. As I said, Ultegra shifters up top. We got Ultegra 6500 series. This is the later one that actually has Ultegra inscribed on the levers. That's kind of cool. Caps always break. There's a guy on eBay. Hey man, you should sponsor me by the way. Uh, <laughs> he 3D prints those caps and I buy, I buy them all the time. I've probably bought a dozen pairs of them. They're about uh, 25 bucks for the set, but they last forever and you could get gray or black. Take them off, as I usually do, give them the degrease, the, you know, uh, spray with hot water, degrease, spray with hot water, lube process. Basically restore the whole shifters. You know, they look good as new again. The one thing that you do want to look out for is if you ever do buy a pair of these shifters or buy a bike is it's kind of hard to find the grips for them. So try not to buy something that has, I mean, anything else you could fix. Like I said, the shifting's pretty easy to get back. Those little caps are easy to buy. Grips, uh, you know, you might, be, you might be SOL on that. But anyways, let's keep on moving on the bike. Giants, this is from 2005. From what I can gather, there's not a whole uh -oh, Veloce update. I'm being attacked. There's Veloce, everybody. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, if you guys haven't noticed, this is a little rescue whip that we got. He has a cleft palate. I did a video back in January. Uh, he's about four months old now. So I'll let him down now. Hopefully, he doesn't interrupt this whole video. One of my favorite things is Giant made a huge, like their website back in 05 was a total nightmare, which is probably one of the reasons this bike isn't that well known. 2005 Giant wasn't all over the United States like it is today with tons of dealers. It was more uh, of a really, really, really good, like up and coming version of Bikes Direct instead of just always dealing in the lower end stuff. Giant was working their way up. Even in 1996, I did a video on this other giant, this carbon vintage one that you can check out in part one and two. Really cool restoration series. Even back then, they were still like pretty good and high up on the end of uh, technology there. And they started falling out. This is an OCR1. Their original OCR1 had a couple of them. Not really great. They don't sell great. They don't ride great. They don't look great. Um, you know, things just for technology is like getting up there and giant was just a touch behind. When they came out in 05, this is one of the things that, uh, <laughs> this is one of the big things that they made a huge change on. And in my opinion, really revolutionized like the build quality because people stopped looking at Trex. They stopped looking at the Cannondales that might only have like Tiagra or, you know, something like Sora on it. 
I mean, dude, they even up to Cannondale Cat 8, you can find a Cannondale Cat 8 with Sora on it as like their lowest model, just because they know people are going to want to have the cool looking racy frame and not spend all the money for it. I mean, I get it, that's part of cycling, but this, it changed a lot of it. Like, it has a really cool looking frame. It has, I mean, look at the seat stays. They have this crazy looking, like, sweeping bend to them. It flares outward. One big thing too though, they straight, they stay true to like what an aluminum frame should be and the whole appeal. If you ask me, it has something as simple as just like the ability to put a bike rack or whatever you may want on the back of it. You have the bolts here that are plugged up and then the little, or you could also put like, you know, the little uh, rain guards or whatever they're called. Uh, you could put those up there too. So obviously, you know, the, the frame looks cool. It's got a very neat look shape as I mentioned, but it also has a lot of newer things too. You don't have to worry about a whole lot of maintenance for this. For example, the headset needed a little bit of work on this. I have two bearings in, uh, I keep a whole batch of sealed bearings for newer frames like this in my parts bin. Two brand new batching bearings, not very expensive. I'm sure it wouldn't cost you more than 30 bucks on Amazon, 15 bucks, something like that. So all you do is just take your, you know, the stem off. You got the two little pieces here, slide the fork out bottom bearing just pops right out. This other one pops right out. Good, good design. It also gives you the ability to upgrade. This does have a carbon fork, but you could use any, anything from like a truck or whatever. Maybe uh, like some bikes have full, not only just the, but this one has the legs that are carbon and an aluminum steer. So you do get a lot of road vibration out, which is nice. Great appeal to this bike, but you drop a lot more weight and you get even more road vibration out when this steer is also carbon as well. So a little bit, you know, like this, to say that this is worth like a hundred bucks, like dude, you can even buy this frame on eBay for a hundred bucks. Uh, it's just too nice and it has too much appeal. And if you were to put something like Zram Red or some, some very high end stuff on there, the weight would just drop so low, it would be crazy. Now to match the frame, one cool thing I also thought, you know, they do get a little bit of a bad rap because, you know, heavier riders say that they don't last as long. I'm a heavier rider. I think if you, if you take care of your stuff, it's going to last a lot longer than people on the internet will tell you because nobody wants to take responsibility for beating their stuff to death and not taking care of it. But uh, these are split spokes. You see on each side, they meet here. There's a nipple side by side parallel. Um, they're strong. They trued up. I mean, they weren't really bad at all when I got it, but they trued up super great. I thought it was honestly going to be a little bit of a problem because I haven't, I haven't had too great of like, I will admit if they're really beat out and they're worn really bad, it is hard to bring it back in nice and neat without like a lot of weird tension and you don't want that. You want everything to be equal. Um, but no, I mean, there's no like up and down wobble to it or anything like that. These are nice and true. They only weigh 2,000 grams. So that's that thing like uh, the Giant I just did in 96. That was, it was, it was way up there, crazy high. This is about that, like today's average, I think you would say. If you buy like a nice bike with high end components, you're gonna, you're gonna hope it's around 2,000 grams. So this keeps you at like a pretty steady, if you found something like this, you got some good training wheels. And you know, in the future you could also like, oh man, I could drop probably, you know, I think 500 grams is just about a pound. So if you drop, get a wheel set that's like 15, 50 or so, you're going to be right there and you're going to drop a ton of weight. So something to think about too, if you did get a bike like this, the weight wasn't terrible. It was supposed to come with the carbon seat post. As you can see now, I did put one on there. We did drop a ton of weight because somebody put an aluminum one on here. I also did change out the saddle, this WTB that was on it is pretty cool, but it's kind of more of a training saddle now, so I'm going to just make that mine. But yeah, somebody put on this big, heavy honking on Baumreiger aluminum seat post. These carbon ones are like 20 bucks, and it's not common for, I mean, it's pretty common for someone to, you know, yoink the carbon seat post before they sell a the bike. So, uh, good move to make. Also, get, get rid of the harsh road vibrations and so on. One of my other favorite things, the crank set. This is a Trubative, tru, Trubative, I don't even know how to say that either. I can't pronounce any of these words. So it's a Trubative uh, Elite, is it Alita? No, yes, yeah, so I'm pretty sure it is. I think this is the Alita series. This is the Isis Drive. So instead of just your normal square taper crank set, this one is actually gonna have like a hollow, this is Shimano's version, and it's gonna have like a complete hollow axle, and it's gonna have this like, uh, 
tooth system on it that it locks down on to the crank there and it saves you a lot of weight and it makes it much more stiffer so one of the cool things about that that this is actually comparable to the Ultegra crank these are just obviously you know you see that a lot truck does this too specialized they'll have like a a good crank but it's just not Shimano's name brand no big deal it's a good crank I really like the fact that again the triple is awesome this keeps like the full size triple here you got a uh, 30 I believe 42 52 is what this has so you really get a lot of ability to make this like I said like put a rack on it and now you could go get groceries you could take the rack off and race on the weekends those are really my favorite kind of bikes. It's what got me into cycling in the get-go. And uh, again, the Ultegra the rear derailleur long cage just gives you the ability to go 11-30 tooth and you won't have any issues with your crank. Kind of wild, 11-30 uh, would give you a 30 and 30 one-to-one -one ratio. If you live in mountainous areas, that's like perfect, especially if you ever want to carry stuff or commute. And uh, that's, you know, we did the gold chain mafia as usual. I upgraded this right now to an 1128 cassette because that's just what I was able to get. But like I said, whichever one you go with, 28 is great too. 30 is, is really great if you got a climbing area. It has just some standard like tech show ish uh, alloy dual pivot brakes. Not bad. Uh, one thing I would recommend I always do with these is if you don't like these like one bolt style brake pads that when you take the bolt off the whole pad falls off and you have to redo everything with your new ones you can actually get a cartridge style that you bolt in and then there's a little one here in the back and it slides out and you just replace those you also have the ability to change out to like a wet weather when it becomes a snowy season or anything like that the one thing i would recommend is if you don't like these one style brakes that are on here and the person before you hasn't already upgraded them go ahead and do that these are actually some Dura-Ace style ones that I had. These are still pretty much like new. If I were to keep this bike, I would definitely go ahead and just put a cartridge style in there. Honestly, the brakes are fairly light. They are a, a long reach, I guess, just because of the geometry of the bike and the size of it. This one's a large. Uh, that happens sometimes, but still good quality, good, strong. Uh, you know, it's really, that's, that's full lot right there. So they have a good bike to it. I was impressed by that. So, like I said, the brakes, you know, I liked all of them, possibly upgrade the pads, etc. 105 triple front derailleur is what it is. Uh, Brazon, cool, save some weight, nothing, uh, you know, we haven't seen or heard of before. One cool thing I did want to point out, Easton EA50 stem, pretty impressed by that. That's like probably one of my, one of my go-to find on eBay for a really good deal and uh, you get 10 bucks or so sometimes, you know. Uh, if you don't have the time for all that, I have a good recommendation, 25 bucks, Uno 7 stem. I'll link to all this stuff in the description. You got some decent, uh, just, they're not even really name brand, they're probably giant in-house stuff, 6061 alloy bars. One of my favorite things is though, it has the newer ergo shape. This gives you the ability to be here, which is one of my favorite spots to be when you're just cruising and you want to like get a good nice stretch. And uh, you still have a ton of room up on the top of the bars too. Because you also have this flat little separate section on the flats. Nothing, uh, you know, nothing terrible. It could be a little cooler if you wanted to save a little extra weight and go carbon and you get a flat top. Honestly, for a bike like this, I probably would just go ahead and spend the extra money and have that. One thing Giant, uh, they don't have on their frame stops the ability to have the little springs. It's just kind of a little plug the brake sits into, or I mean the housing sit into. And uh, they have tensioners that go up here on these, so do make sure you put those on if you are building up this bike or somebody lost them. Jaguar sells a set, I'll include in here as well. One other thing I did add was these, these are just like VP combo pedals, I guess you call them. This part with the little funny plastic piece is supposed to be a flat. And then the other side you can flip over and be clipped in. Again, I thought great for the combo of this bike. Now to get down to the nitty gritty of what was really, you know, obviously what is the bike really like? Oh yeah, I did want to add uh, the cool blue housings I did to like add in. I did uh, all new all of that. Uh, shift and brake cables. And the total weight with everything only being, and I, I did want to point this out too, the pedals I put on just because it was all I had at the moment. I'm literally running out of parts here, guys. Uh, this bike, this bike running out thing is, is, needs to end quickly. 
<laughs> um, they were like almost a pound. They are, they're heavy. They're not great. They're really just kind of like test ride, you know, commuter pedals. And uh, I'm sure they're, it saved a bunch. But before it weighed 21.4 pounds. And that's kind of crazy to think. Bike Blue Book says this is only worth $100. Yeah, okay, go find a 20 pound bike. P.S. You know, as I mentioned, this is a 55.5 centimeter being a large. That's what Giant marks it as anyways on their geometry chart. And uh, and it's a triple, and it has a long cage rear derailleur, and it has, you know, like little tiny things. The Technically, you could get like Ultegra brakes and lose a little bit of weight here and there and everywhere. But for it to be exactly where it's at today, I mean, this is 100% a budget build, rebuild as you can get as well. Um, it has new CSD comp tires on it that I moved off of another bike, my, my older Giant I just talked about. So, I mean, it goes to show you that you just get a decent frame. The fork isn't even that important to tell you the truth. Like I said, the fork isn't like, it's just good. It's not awesome, but it's great for what it has now. Like to be this at a budget, it's in 20 pounds. That's kind of crazy to think you're getting near um, the bike that the carbon giant I did was actually like a couple pounds heavier than that. So you're really starting to see where technology and aluminum is taking over. And this being only a 2005, I think it was really you know, people just overlooked it for whatever reason. Like I said, their website looked like oof, like a child did it. It's very bad looking because I was trying to dig up what year this actually was and check out the geometry and all. And uh, that, you know, this is why I love doing stuff like this. I love finding builds like this. Really is truly a hidden bike gem. Please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Really helps me get more videos out. And actually, I got a really cool video coming up right now next that you guys might appreciate. And that's this coin. If you like the vin vintage mountain bikes, check this bad way out. It's going to be cool. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. Bye.